These are the best entry-level roles in tech. This list is going to include technical and non-technical roles. So if you're watching this video and brand new to starting your career in tech, then I'd highly recommend watching this video to the end because I guarantee you there will at least be one role that you're going to be interested in on this list. All right, jumping right in, the first job that we'll be talking about is a GRC analyst. GRC stands for Governance, Risk, and Compliance, and it's essentially everything that has to do with the compliance and auditing side of cybersecurity. This is a non-technical cybersecurity role and can also be known as a compliance analyst. I recently made a few videos on GRC analyst jobs, but essentially GRC is one of the areas in cybersecurity with the most growth potential in the next few years because the work that they do directly ties to a company's bottom line and how they make money. So let's say there's a company that is a cloud provider. So essentially they provide cloud services for other companies to use and host their platforms, their applications, et cetera. For the cloud company to be able to attract customers, the customers want to know whether or not the cloud company can keep their data secure. And this is where GRC comes in, where the cloud company will have to go through annual audits, compliance and regulatory requirements to be able to get a certification like the ISO 27001. This certification is basically assigned to the customer saying, hey, a third party came in and audited our processes and our services and they said that we are also in the green light and following the security procedures that we're supposed to and we will keep your data secure and this will give your customers more confidence in your ability to keep their data their customers their clients secure and they'll be more likely to want to work with you so just based on the simplified version of what makes GRC so important you can see that GRC is directly tied to whether or not a company can attract and retain customers because if the services that they provide isn't secure enough to make the customer happy then the customer will most likely go somewhere else. And that is why so many companies, large and small, are scrambling right now to get certifications, to go through audits, and make sure that they're aligning with compliance and regulatory requirements so that they can attract more customers and, of course, to improve their overall security program. The average salary for a GRC analyst in the U.S. is $97,000 per year. All right, the next job on this list is a software QA engineer. The main role for a QA engineer is to make sure that the applications that your company is building meet specific testing requirements and remove or mitigate any potential bugs before going live. This is one of the most important parts of the software development lifecycle that focuses on things like test automation, defect tracking, regression testing, performance testing, security testing, and various different forms of documentation. This is an especially great option for anyone who is looking to work remotely or worried about not having the experience for a career change. As companies build out more applications and more tooling, the need for QA engineering is even bigger, especially as we look at the number of cybersecurity vulnerabilities and bugs that plague so many of the applications that are live on the internet today. On a day-to-day, Day, a software QA engineer will be developing and executing test plans, creating automated test scripts, perform manual and automated testing, and logging any found defects to ensure that bugs are remediated within acceptable timelines. They may also be collaborating with development teams to resolve any issues, conduct performance tests, and create and share detailed reports with stakeholders, including senior leadership and dev managers. Many roles in the software QA engineering space don't require you to have a degree, and this is where the sponsor of today's video comes in, Careerist. With Careerist's online bootcamp, you can gain the necessary knowledge, mentorship, and advice to become a successful tech specialist regardless of your prior experience or educational background. The Careerist Software QA Engineering online bootcamp helps you land your dream job in tech with no coding required, high salaries and remote work opportunities, a relatively low stress tech role with work-life balance, and a chance to work one-on-one -on -one with your career coach. And they'll be the ones to provide you career support and guidance on your job search. As you go through the program, this includes one-on-one -on -one coaching, resume and LinkedIn optimization, job interview prep, personalized job matching, job search tracking, as well as overall guidance on your job search. And they also provide a land a job or get your money back guarantee if you don't find a job within one year of completing the bootcamp. You can find the complete terms and conditions on their website, but this is one of my favorite things to see as part of any bootcamp because it removes so much of the risk of joining a bootcamp in the first place. Careers graduates have been hired by companies like Meta, Google, Intel, Apple, Samsung, Salesforce, and many, many more. And you can also check out student reviews directly on their website, including these careerist grads who have come from different backgrounds, including someone who was originally a photographer and became a QA engineer through Careerist's online bootcamp program. Over 1,000 careerist graduates are employed by companies in 42 states. Software QA engineering salaries in the U.S. start at $69,000 per year, 
based on average salaries from Glassdoor. As a licensed education provider, Careerist offers interactive software QA engineering courses that can be completed in 15 weeks with personalized guidance from experienced coaches. Take the first step towards a successful tech career by following the link in my description below to get a special $600 discount on the course. Thank you to Careerist for sponsoring this video and let's get back to the rest of the roles. All right, number three on this list is an SOC analyst. This can sometimes be used interchangeably with a security analyst, but it's essentially a cybersecurity professional who works on the defensive side of cybersecurity. This is one of the most popular entry-level roles in cyber and for good reason, because it's one of the core ways that organizations keep their data and their applications secure. So what exactly does an SOC analyst do? You may be looking at SIEMs to look up for any security alerts that pop up. If there is an alert that looks suspicious, then an incident would be spun up to investigate. And this process will look different across various different companies and different sectors. SOC stands for Security Operations Center, and within the SOC, there are different levels that will have different job responsibilities and functions. For example, an SOC analyst tier one may be the one primarily looking at SIEM alerts, looking for anything that may be suspicious and resolve them within their SLA or their required time to report or review certain alerts. If a tier one SOC analyst is unable to resolve the issue, then they may pass up the alert to a tier two SOC analyst. Depending on how big the SOC is, there may be up to three tiers of SOC analysts and they'll all have their different functions and responsibilities on detecting and responding to security incidents, as well as of course, based on how severe the incidents are. As an SOC analyst, you're essentially the front lines of a company anytime there's a security issue, breach, any kind of suspicious activity or anomaly that may pop up in any dashboards or logging that you're reviewing. The average salary for an SOC analyst tier one in the US is $82,000 per year. To become an SOC analyst, there are various different courses that you can take. A common security certification that I would recommend is CompTIA Security Plus and pairing that with hands-on defensive security training. All right, number four on this list is a sales engineer. This is a technical role that works in the sales team that can speak directly to customers and clients about the tooling, about the technical details, about any implementations, about their use cases, as well as other technical specs that the customer may want to know. This is one of the roles in tech that have a huge overlap with the business and sales side and is a great technical role that also has an emphasis on sales commissions on top of your salary. And that is another reason why this role is so popular with those who come from a business background or a sales background that want to also make a pivot into tech. You're essentially going to be providing the technical knowledge that you have about the product or the service that your company provides and sharing that with the customer to help resolve any of their pain points, solve any of their issues, as well as of course, conducting product demos, working as the liaison between the sales team and, and the technical teams. This is also a great role for anyone who enjoys speaking directly to a client and the customer service aspect of a technical role. An entry-level sales engineer makes on average in the US an annual salary of $135,000 per year. And this I personally think is a huge salary, especially for entry-level roles. But another reason for this is, remember when I mentioned commissions, anything, any role on the sales team is going to have some form of a payment structure that revolves around commissions for the sales that you make, which also offers incentives for the sales team to be able to push and sell certain products or services to their customers. And that is why typically sales salaries are so much higher, even for entry level, because on top of your base salary and any other benefits that you have, you also have your sales commissions and potential bonuses, which is just another reason why sales engineers are becoming such a popular role for those who are interested in tech and business. And I want to call out that Careerist also offers a sales engineering course that also has all the program perks of their software QA engineering program. This includes their land a job or get your money back guarantee. And I'll include all the links to Careerist programs down in my description. All right, next up on this list is a UX or UI designer. This is a great role for anyone who is a bit more creative, but also interested in a tech career. I know a lot of people automatically think creating logos and fancy wireframes, but there's a lot more that goes into UI and UX designing, including conducting A-B testing with users, doing UI UX research, understanding business needs and user behaviors to be able to make websites and applications flow in a way that users can understand, ensuring consistency against multiple different products if you're working for a larger company, collaborating with developers, PMs, and other stakeholders to ensure that the application has a positive user experience. All the best websites out there were most likely not designed by the software development team. They most likely had a really good UX or UI design team that knows what users want in a website, knows what users may expect from certain buttons or certain behaviors for different website functionalities. 
And having good UI UX design is one of the most important things for a company's branding since nowadays so much of the branding between a company and their customers is online. The average salary for a UI UX designer in the US is $109,000 per year based on average salaries from Glassdoor. And I'll also link the Careerist UX UI design program in my description below. All right, last but not least on this list is a data analyst. This was actually one of the roles that I was most interested in when I was in school, but essentially a data analyst is someone who collects and processes information to find any trends or insights for a company to use to help make any business decisions that may impact their customers, their products, or their internal employees. As a data analyst, you may be developing and implementing data collection systems, strategies, generating reports, and creating data visualizations to communicate key findings to stakeholders, senior leaders, and executives, and even potentially share it externally with your customers and external stakeholders. Part of this may also include working with other departments in gathering and fine-tuning the data and data sources, understanding exactly what insights the company is looking for, and providing actionable findings based on the data that's analyzed. This is a great jumping off point for anyone who may be interested in data science. And if you also have experience with certain coding languages like Python, R, or SQL. All right, so that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully it was insightful for anyone who may not know exactly what role that they're most interested in. If there are any other entry-level tech roles that I may have missed on this list, feel free to drop them in the comments below. And you can take the first step towards your tech career today by following the link in my description below or using my code with Sandra to get $600 off any careerist program. And of course, have that peace of mind with their landed Job or get your money back guarantee if you don't find a job after one year of graduating from a career risk program with terms and conditions listed on their website. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Don't forget to join our Discord channel where we discuss all things cybersecurity and tech careers. I post videos weekly and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!